Hello. So I wanted to start off by saying I thought it was ironic because me and Hamza spoke before this and we both kind of agreed that we hate, like, not hate, but we, don't, we would never call ourselves a star or a celebrity or anything like that. That's totally not either of our style. But then I get here today and the, and the board outside is Instagram star, Instagram star. Um, but I will say I think, and I'm sure you would agree, even a year ago if I had, if anyone had said the kinds of opportunities I've had just in the last year because of Instagram, I would have said, you're crazy, that none of that's going to happen. So, I mean, in a year, in five years, maybe social media stars will be the new celebrities. Um, and I think that's kind of what we're here to talk about is where we see things going and how we got our starts with our accounts. So um, I'll just tell you a little bit about myself, and then I'll turn it over to Hamza. Um, I started on Instagram. My account is just Gilly Houston, just my name. And I started on Instagram pretty much when the app began, and I was just using it casually. It was like grainy photos of my friends, like with really shitty filters on them, like really old school. Um, and then it sort of took a turn for me when I got my first iPhone. And this was a few years ago, and I had like the iPhone 4C. It wasn't even great camera quality, but I was still like, whoa, my mind is blown by how beautiful photos can be just taken on the iPhone. And around that point in time, I'd always loved food, but I never really knew how to cook. I didn't really grow up in a cooking family. So I was teaching myself how to cook, and I was taking photos of everything. And back then, food Instagrams weren't really a thing. Um, so I think timing was on my side and that people started following me because they were like, damn, this girl posts a lot of really good looking food. And back then there weren't that many accounts doing that. Um, and so then I came back to New York. I went to school here. Um, I started working in food and in journalism. Now um, I'm an editor at a food magazine and I write for a lot of food publications. So that's just what I'm around all the time and it's what I'm obsessed with. So um, many people would call me a food Instagrammer. I don't know if that's necessarily true because it's just my name, it's not a brand, but um, it, it is a way for me to express the thing that I'm most passionate about, and I think Hums is really similar like that. Yeah, I totally, I totally agree with you. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm kind of like wrapping my head around this. I, I literally just ran like a bunch of miles. I was, yeah. Um, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, to kind of... Uh, also introduce myself similar to Gilly. Uh, I started off on social media. My, Insta my Instagram handle name is Hamza Dees, but before that, don't laugh, do not laugh. It used to be old coffee. I had no idea what I was doing with uh, social media at that time. I was literally just on it because everyone else was. And then I've been skateboarding for the past nine years. I'm now 19 years old. And my videographer who filmed me skateboarding would stop and take photos on his iPhone. And I was amazed by the results that I would see later on in a day when he shared it on social media. And I was like, oh, like, no way, like, you got that effect. You know, like, he used apps to enhance his images. And I was like, it didn't look like that in person. So I wanted to create images like that. And me and another friend would go out on days where it was raining or days that you couldn't skateboard. And... After that, my friend got annoyed because I always thought he was the better photographer because he had the better mobile device and a better DSLR camera. So I would kind of shadow him. If he pointed his iPhone at something, I would stand right behind him and point my iPhone. You know, sometimes nudge him out of the way, like, oh, like, where he's standing, like, I got to do the same posture, you know, like, and that's going to make my photo, like, just like his. And he got annoyed because of that. And he said, Hamza, I don't want to hang out with you anymore. You're, you're kind of you're kind of copying everything I do. So I was like, oh, like, screw you. Like, I could totally do my own thing. So the, the next two weeks, I just went out and captured my own content. And right then and there was when kind of like everything started for me. It led me to where I am now, to being on a stage talking to you. I started doing uh, urban exploration photography, where that revolved around risking my life just to go and get a photograph and bring that back and sharing it on social media. And a lot of, I'm not gonna get into detail too much about it, a lot of things happen such as people placing white flags where they shouldn't have been, uh, me being accused of that, and that kind of like sparked an outrage online and I received death threats and like 
people hated me. Like my best friends started to hate me. Like people that I, like I showed photography started to hate me. Like just everything fell down. But at the same time, like my whole world shattered right there. But when it shattered, like something else created, like a whole nother world was building itself out of that, like out of the broken pieces of mine. <laughs> it was, it was a lot. But um, yeah, let's. Yeah, I want to talk about. Wanna, <laughs> yeah. Well, now that we know Hums's world was shattered and built back up, um, oh, yeah. I just want to talk about your photography a little bit because I think it's just mind-blowingly beautiful. And to me, it's pretty easy to go take a photo of a brunch and make it look good. But some of the things mm. you post are like astonishing. So Thank did you. you always set out to be a photographer? Or did it sort of bloom out of social media? And have you had any sort of formal training or, or did it, were you just sort of self-taught in that way? Um, I was self-taught. I didn't come from a family with a lot of money. So I had like an Android device. It was like a family plan phone. Terrible camera on it. So my, friends were, my friend was shooting with an iPhone. So I said, I need an iPhone so I can you know, copy him. And I didn't have any money to afford a brand new one. So when the iPhone 5 came out, my friend was getting rid of his iPhone 4. It was broken. Like the screen was literally halfway off. Only thing that really functioned was the camera and like two editing apps. So I said, hey, can I buy that off you? And he gave it to me for 40 bucks when he originally charged me 50. So <laughs> at this time, I was like shooting with a broken iPhone 4. And it was more of lifestyle content, what I went through about my everyday from skating from all the way to Queens, all the way down to like South Street Seaport in Manhattan. I documented my everyday and then I noticed that people started to like that. And at the time I was following like 200 Instagram accounts and I was like, oh, like, well, if I'm gonna do photography, I need to follow more. So I went on my favorite photographer's pages. I went to who they were following, clicked on all the, their follow, the people that they're following and I was like, okay, this interests me, this interests me. And then right then and there, I was exposed to all different types of photography from food photography, um, lifestyle uh, photography, to urban exploration, to street photography, like all the different, uh, mediums of photography I was exposed to it and I was like wow this world is bigger than I thought and this whole social media world is bigger than I thought and that's when I set out to build an audience so they can share see my work and enjoy it as much as I did speaking of building an audience I know both of us our main platform that we share on is Instagram but um, obviously now there are so many different other apps and tools what kinds of um, other ways are you reaching out? What other apps are you using to sort of build a community outside of Instagram or, or sort of involve your viewers more in your life? And Well, I'm sure like most of you, in light of recent events, I use Snapchat. Um, and then, yeah, I use Snapchat to kind of document my daily life versus like the things I did before. Like if I posted something on Instagram, it would be from the day before or the week before. So Snapchat was a way that I can show people what I'm currently doing. And they love that, like the kind of, like the insight into my life. And, you know, they would send me messages and I would reply and they would be like, oh, like you actually replied. Most people, when they saw my work online, they thought I was like this character, this ghost, or based on my work, they thought I was like some guy in a red leotard swinging his web across New York City to get a photograph. And I was like, no, like, I'm just like you. Like, I, I'm, I'm in high school. I'm, I'm out here just like you, just trying to document my everyday. Yeah, I'm, I love Snapchat, too. Um, I was a pretty early adopter of Snapchat. And what I loved about it was I think Instagram can sort of put this veneer over things and make everything look perfect and filtered and, and make your life look so composed. And what I think about is great about Snapchat is that I think they actually go perfectly hand in hand because you get to show people that side of your personality that makes them say, like, this seems like my friend, you know, this seems like a person I could hang out with. I mean, I know that I don't take myself very seriously. Like, I'm a very, you know, like, I find humor in everything. But if people don't read my captions or they're just scrolling through, they might not get that about me. And so then you start to build this community of people who you feel like understand you better and feel like they're friends with you and feel like they could go have a meal with you or go, you know, shoot some crazy side of a building and, and they want to have that, that deeper connection. Obviously this week the Instagram stories came out. I'm not crazy about them because I kind of like the separation. I, I like, 
You like the Instagram stories? Oh, yeah. Well, oh, yeah. the views are pretty nice, but I, I do almost like a little bit of separation, a little yeah. bit of still that that alternate reality of Instagram where everything is beautiful and everything's a little untouchable. Yeah. Um, so how, speaking of kind of developing that personality, how have you differentiated yourself from other accounts and made it stand out versus the next... Um, you know, person shooting buildings and... Yeah. So to kind of jump back again, when I first started photography, you know, like, I idolized, like, three photographers. And when I idolized them, I was like, oh, my God, like, this guy's a god. Like, he's a photo god. Like, oh, my God, did you see that photo? Like, like you're, you're literally just, like, losing your mind. And then when you start to develop your craft, you're kind of like, okay, like, I, I was fortunate enough to meet those three photographers that I idolized, and when I met them, I was just like, do not blow this. Like, make them your friend. And when I did that, instead of idolizing them, I began to humanize them, and I was like, oh, you know, like, they pee and poop just like you. And <laughs> you, you, you just become, like, like, more aware of how social media is guided and, like, how you can edit yourself online. Like, these people, they seem like photo gods online, but in person, they're just like you. They have a sense of humor, and they're, they're human. But to... Sorry, what was what did you say? Just how you sort of differentiate yourself and make yourself stand out from yeah. the next yeah. person. Not See, that that many people are, like, scaling the side of, like, the Empire State Building yeah. to... There to you go. Crazy All shit. right. I got my train of thought again. Yeah, so, like, you can kind of, like... When I, when I, to kind of go off what she said, when I hung out with those, like, popular photographers and they saw my work and, you know, like, I said, they're like, oh, like, that's your work? Like, I've seen articles about that. Or I'm like, they're like, oh, like, they're the established photographer and they're telling me, like, there's no way I would do that. And every time I got that response, I was like, that's exactly why I would do it because even you, the most established photographer, wouldn't go to the lengths that I go to in order to capture this image and bring back and share with the community of social media and I said that's I said that's my niche that's how I can be creative and original in this social media world where everything has been done and that's what I continue to do did has there ever been a point in time that you suddenly had like a boom in followers because I know my growth was has been just pretty much gradual. Occasionally, I'll be included on a list of, you know, the top food Instagrammers to follow, and you'll get, like, a bump of a 1,000 followers. But was there ever a time maybe when that whole controversy was happening? I remember when that happened with the white flags on the bridge, and people thought it was terrorists, but then they were like, no, it's just these crazy, you know, s street shooters. I have no um, idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not aware of that. Um, but... Was there ever a time when your followers just sort of took off and, and you sort of had your moment? Because yeah. he has 188,000 followers. Like, that doesn't just happen overnight. But Yeah. So um, at one point, I had 9,000 followers on Instagram, and it was mostly New York people, and they were, like, oh, like, tagging their other friends. Like, look at this photographer, like, shooting from atop the Manhattan Bridge or, you know, like, showing you some crazy perspective that you don't often see of New York. And then out of nowhere, I woke up one morning to 14,000 followers. And I was like, yeah, Instagram is just like flipping out. So I deleted the app, re-downloaded it, and I, went, I opened it up again. I was like, OK, this is still at 14K. I was like, what happened? And first thing I do every morning, I look at my Instagram. So I go look at my text messages, and it's like 22 unread texts, like six missed calls. And people are just like, cursing me out, sending me death threats. And then some of them are like, dude, like my mom saw you on the news and I'm just like, what's going on? And then that's when I was accused of putting a white flag on top of the Brooklyn Bridge. And people accused me of that because I was that kid in New York City known for climbing up a bridge to take a photograph. And when that happened, you know, a bunch of articles went out. I was on news channels. I was on like NPR and People were like, oh, Hamza, you're getting so much popularity off of this. But all they saw was, like, my followers going up. And, yeah, I saw it, too. It was nice. But at the same time, like, I was receiving death threats. Like, and then the following week, like, every time I went outside and I saw other photographers, you know, like, I put my camera away and I kind of, I, like, went on, like, red alert. I was like, okay, if these guys attack me, I'm going to have to defend myself. So at that time, it was kind of like a 
most people would say like that was my big break. And over the next course of like that week, my following shot up to about 44K because like the whole controversy of the white flag, everyone was pointing a finger at me. Like my following did shoot up, but virtually it shot up. But in reality, I always looked over my shoulder and I was like, I'm shooting photos. Like I shouldn't have to look over my shoulder scared to take a photograph. You know, like it, I don't think it's ever gotten up to that point where somebody had to do that. And that was kind of the big break I had. Do I regret it? No. Yeah, I mean, and like you said, there's there's pluses and minuses to everything. Um, and I'd say one of one of the things that probably both of us that's that's a plus and minus is this new sort of world of monetizing your Instagram and working with brands. Because obviously, I think now it's everyone wants to know how to get to, especially millennials, because they know millennials aren't watching TV commercials anymore and saying, I'm going to buy that. Or, you know, they, they're not necessarily being force fed those thing, those products and going out and buying them. So they want to work with influencers and, and sort of get the word out about their products. But at the same time, you walk that fine line as someone saying, how do I stay authentic to my brand? Because I think there tends to be more of a, of a, a criticism on influencers when they advertise on their feed because unlike a celebrity or a brand, when you partner with someone, someone almost feels like their friend is trying to sell them something. Like if your friend came over and said, hey, do you like this watch? Like, isn't this a great watch? Well, they gave me 20 bucks to like try to sell it to you. Um, so how have you sort of been able to work to monetize your account and to make money off of your work, but do it in a really authentic and way that still doesn't piss off your followers? Um, to kind of, yeah. So like, I was kind of known in New York City for taking like pictures of my feet like off the edge of a building or kind of standing off the edge of a building. So a lot of like streetwear brands saw that and they were like, okay, like he's wearing like Nikes, Adidas, you know, like the popular shoe. And they were like, oh, like what if he was wearing our shoe, our sock, our pant? And that's when they started to reach out to me. And that was pretty cool. I had no idea. I was like, okay, like I just want to take photos. Like why are you like bothering me? <laughs> and, you know, I, I had no idea how, yeah, I didn't grow up around money, so I had no idea how to, like, treat it or ask for it. So they offered me, like, money, like, okay, like, yeah, we'll, we'll give you this for 500 bucks. And I'm like, 500 bucks? Like, and you want me to take, like, 20 pictures for you? And I'm just like, yeah. And then, you know, as I grew, as I grew up and I started to understand how to monetize my Instagram more, I realized that, like the things I do, like as a photographer, your work is vital to these brands and your time is worth a lot. So I can, I should be asking for more in return for giving them the things that they get because my work isn't something, I, I, at least I think in my opinion, my work isn't something that you can get from the everyday photographer. So by risking my life for these images to bring back to you and you sell to your consumer, like I should be getting paid a fair amount. So that's when I started cranking my prices up very, very higher. And, and I began to understand how I can monetize that. And one of the things that I'm really happy that I got to do is one of my favorite musicians is Kanye West. And one of my first major gigs was partnering with him on Yeezy season one. And I was like, I, I lost, like I've never been a fanboy, but I was, that was it, that was it. I was like, all right, I'm losing my cool. And there was like certain times during the campaign where they were like, yeah, like Hamza, come in like three hours later. And I'm like, sure, I could sleep in. Then when you get in there, they're like, oh yeah, like Kanye was doing this here. And I'm just like, why would you make me miss that? And they're like, because you can't keep your cool. And I'm just like, <laughs> whatever. But that was like, <laughs> that, that was like one of my first big payouts. And, you know, like I, I'm showing my mom and she's like, they gave you that much money for shooting photos. And I'm like, I can't believe it either. But <laughs> yeah, like this is real. And then I held on to that. I didn't, I didn't grow up around money. Again, I held on to that check for like six or seven months because I didn't have a bank account. I didn't have any like, I didn't have any of that. So I had no, I just had the piece of paper and I'm like, what am I going to do with this? Can I, can I cash this in? <laughs> like, are you going to give me like all this money? And that was, that was like one of the big like turnarounds for me. Yeah. Moving forward, do you, how do you aspire to sort of grow beyond the Instagram 
world, you know, do you, do you aspire to have a photography career that's sort of independent from that identity of being an influencer, or do you sort of just understand them to go hand in hand? Instagram is Instagram itself, just as if MySpace was MySpace. Like, MySpace was MySpace, and then it died out. Everyone's on Facebook. Now everyone's on Instagram. Instagram is a platform, and to be honest, one of the only reasons I share my work on Instagram is because it's the number one platform out there. So me being someone who wants to monetize and, and show my work on social media, you have to stay updated with these new apps and new trends. So being an Instagrammer is not as great as being called an influencer. An Instagrammer is so like degrading. Being called an influencer is so much more uplifting because that's just showing you like you are inspiring others, you're influencing others. And yeah, and I mean, where was I going with this? But I understand that too, and it also extends across different platforms, and it's not yeah. super limited. Yeah, Instagram. Yeah. Well, I mean, not to be like the 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 idiot in the room or me in person, but Instagram is eventually going to die out. And focusing all your time on that one app is great because you do like benefit in the long run. But you know, like if you had zero followers and you wanted to get like a hundred followers now, by the time you get like a hundred thousand followers, Insta everyone's going to be moved on to the next app. So I think it's best for you to like spread your work across all platforms like i i share my work on snapchat on instagram on twitter on tumblr on 500 pixels on vsco um that's all i could think of on the top of my head but i'm constantly out there sharing my work on all these platforms because i know one one day one of these platforms is going to die out and then i'm going to need to start all over again so i'm already at a head start so I think we have to wrap up, but um, if any of you have any more specific questions for me or Hamza, I know, I'm sure, like, we'd both be happy to answer them. Just slide into the DMs or shoot us an email. Oh, yeah. Um, my account is Gilly Houston, and yours is? Mine's is Hamza Dees, H-U-M-Z-A-D-E-A-S. And Gilly's G-I-L-L-I-E, Houston, like the city. But thank you, guys. And <laughs>